Who's ready for some more budget-friendly gingerbread DIYs? If that's you, stay tuned. Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Courtney. Today I have got some budget-friendly Dollar Tree gingerbread DIYs for you. The best part, I'm teaming up with my friend Kristen from Kristen K, who will have a video full of gingerbread DIYs as well. It will be linked down below in the description box. Now let's get crafty. For this first DIY, Kristen and I decided that we wanted to do a project where we were both using one of the same items from Dollar Tree. So that's gonna be the gingerbread houses. So you're gonna get to see two different creative minds working with the same product. So for this, I had four of these gingerbread houses actually left over from last year. In all reality, I probably needed about six of these houses, but I made it work with four. So to start, what I needed to do was on two of the houses, I needed to trim off the snowy overhang on the houses. So on the left and the right, I cut off the snowy part. And then I also kind of cut off on the bottom of the houses, the little bubble out, I guess, of the snow. So but basically what I was trying to do was to get a nice flat side on the left and a nice flat side on the right so two of the houses are gonna get that special little treatment I just use my miter shears to cut it and then on the third house I cut just the left side so the left side overhang on the top of the roof as well as the little left snowy part on the bottom and then on the fourth house I did it on the right side Now I was ready to paint my houses. So two of the houses will be painted with that Restore chalk paint that I talk about all the time, my favorite gingerbread color. And then two of them will be painted red. So I started with the house that I trimmed off on the right side, painted that with the paint. I didn't paint the door or the window frame or the roof um, because that's gonna be painted white. And then I painted one of the houses that had been trimmed on both left and right side brown as well, which means the last two houses you have left over will be painted red. It's time to grab some white paint and finish painting up these houses. So all the houses will be painted the same. I painted the roof with white paint. I did the window, the little kind of three dimensional window with the white paint. I also went in and painted the door along with at the bottom of the house where you can kind of see the pile up of snow. I did that white along the left, right side of the house, the cross piece on the house white. Now where the lights are, I do go in with some more of the brown and red paint and just try to fill those in as best I can because I don't really want them to show and then the window outline that you can see I do go in with white paint on those as well The wreaths on all the doors got painted with some green paint. Once that was done, I felt like the windows at the top needed a little something extra. So I took some glitter glue that I had from Sherbonder. It's the clear glitter glue. And I filled in the four little panels on each window. And I just love how it turned off because it kind of gave it this whole glassy frosted vibe it looked like light sparkling through so it was just something extra to add to it the, the bows did get painted red and then i took one of my weeding tools and i dabbed it in some red paint to add little berries to each of the green wreaths And here is the part of the project that I really was dreading because I felt like what this needed was some glitter. I didn't wanna do the white glue sticks like I normally do or the Dollar Tree fake snow. And I kind of documented this whole thing over on Instagram. If you follow me over there, you know all about this, but I had to order some glitter and I decided that the roof needed glitter, the um, windows that I kind of painted, hand painted needed glitter, the bottom of the house, I just needed to add glitter to it. So I'm gonna include a little real audio so you guys can find out kind of what I was really thinking about this whole glittering process. Okay, this glitter is not bad at all. I mean, it's bad, but not like, it's not as bad as I thought it would be. Do I still wanna work with glitter? No, no, I do not. But for this one project, I can tolerate it without losing my mind. Okay, I can't believe this is going, we'll just call it going mediocre. It's mediocre, it's not great. It's not great, not great. It may not be good, but it's definitely not terrible. Okay. I really 
I'm not enjoying this, but <laughs> at least this glitter doesn't stick everywhere. Like, kudos to Spectre Glitter. And it has a spout that you can pour it, which is even better. Sh cookie sprinkles. I'm just going to pretend I'm working with cookie sprinkles. That's it. Cookie sprinkles. Everybody likes cookie sprinkles. People just don't like glitter. I don't know if some people like glitter. People who like glitter, I'm not really sure why they like glitter. It's questionable if you ask me. Okay. Really, this is like... It's not that bad. Okay, I have to say, it's not that bad. Like, And it just comes right off. Which is like... Okay, I, I'm blown away, like seriously. I guess I just, it doesn't stick, it doesn't stick. This is, this is the glitter. This is the glitter. Now to finish off the houses, I took some of these glittered wooden tree stickers from Dollar Tree and I glued a tree to each side of the door just using some hot glue. And then I was ready to attach my houses together. So to do that, I'm using some hinges that I just ordered on Amazon. It came in a huge pack for like six bucks. I will link everything in today's video down below in the description box for you. And I ended up just using one hinge between each house. I probably would recommend to go ahead and use two, but I just did one kind of in the center part. And I used hot glue instead of the screws provided because if you try to use the screws they are longer than the house is thick so it will poke through the other side once I got those hinges attached my little gingerbread tree skirt was ready to go around one of my little four foot trees in my kitchen Grab yourself one of these wooden spoons from Dollar Tree and paint it with some of the Restore chalk paint. You want to make sure you get the whole spoon coated with the paint. Once that's dry, grab yourself some paint markers. You're going to need a white, a black, and a pink. And what I'm doing is drawing a little gingerbread face on my spoon. Once the face was completely dry, I grabbed a piece of this red and white striped fabric that I had gotten from Walmart last year and I just hot glued it to the handle. I also took a piece of it and tied it to make it look like a bow and I hot glued that kind of in the, I guess, the neck area of the spoon. To finish it off, all I did was take one of these mini peppermints that I got from Hobby Lobby in the miniature section and then this spoon was ready to be displayed. Now please note, this is not a food safe spoon, it is strictly for decor. This DIY actually can be two different projects. So I, when I started this, I had the vision of it being an ornament that you could actually attach to a little gift as kind of a little embellishment, but then it turns into something else. So stay with me here. I started by painting two of these gingerbread wooden pieces from Dollar Tree with some of that Restore Chalk paint. And then again, I grabbed my paint markers and added some accents, just doing the little white and the black and the pink to the gingerbread men. The gingerbread are finished and now I've got some more of these mini peppermints 
And what I really like about them, again, these were from Hobby Lobby. They have kind of a white plastic ring on the top of them. And then on the opposite end, on the bottom, there's actually a hole. So what I did is I grabbed some eye hooks. I got this huge pack from Amazon and I needed to squeeze them just a little bit so that the eye hooks would fit into the underside of the peppermint. I squeezed them with my pliers and then I screwed them directly into my little gingerbread pieces. I attached my earring pieces to the peppermints. Now you could leave these peppermint earrings just like that. They were super cute, but I just wanted to make them a little more substantial so all I did was once all my pieces were in place I just took some glue I would use a strong adhesive glue you could use hot glue if you wanted to but definitely I would probably use a more permanent type glue and put that on the top of the eye hook that's on top of your gingerbread and then just push that up into the peppermint and you've got yourself some really cute earrings now again you could totally flip this don't do the earring and just make it a really cute ornament This gingerbread village is kind of going with what seems to be a little bit trendy, which is all the pastel colors. So you just need to gather up a collection of houses. Most of these came from Dollar Tree. The two houses that have flags on them, I got on clearance from Hobby Lobby for like 39 cents each, but I'm going to be using a total of five houses. So I just kind of wanted to show you what I had to work with. Once I figured out which houses I wanted to use, I started by painting all of the roofs on the houses with some white paint. For the paint colors on the houses, I just dug up some of my pastels. One house is going to be pink, one will be a blue, one will be a purple, and two of them will be a green color. One of the chimneys on the houses needed to be painted, so I grabbed some truffle chalk paint by Waverly and painted that with that brown paint. Once that was finished, I was ready to kind of arrange my houses so I would know how the little village would look. And when I was happy with their placement, I just used some hot glue to attach the houses together. The houses are all attached and now I needed to think about the doors and the windows. I grabbed this pack of fairy doors and windows on Amazon and I pulled them out. There were several different styles of doors as long with the windows. Kind of messed around, figured out what I wanted to use and once I figured that out, I painted them all with some white paint. Now that the houses were all attached, I was ready to put my doors on. So I laid them out and then used hot glue to get those secured. Same with the windows, laid those out and secured them again with some hot glue. From there, I took some Mod Podge and started by putting it on top of the roofs. And I'm using some of the faux snow from Dollar Tree. And I have to say in the battle of faux snow versus the glitter that I used in that first DIY, the glitter wins a hundred percent. Like it doesn't, I'm telling you that glitter, it was like a magic glitter. I don't know. I, I really don't like glitter, but that one made me like it a little bit. So once I got that secured all on the roofs of the homes, I decided that the roof lines needed it. So I put some Mod Podge, added the faux snow there, along with some faux snow at the base of each of the houses. To finish up these houses, on the purple and blue house, I took some of that glitter hot glue and I outlined the doors and also made some little doorknobs. With that, I also added a little bit to some of the windows. I pulled out all my little, um, I don't know, peppermint trinkets, or I don't know, not trinkets, but little embellishments that I had. A lot of these were from Hobby Lobby. And for some of them, I used them as doorknobs. I kind of figured out, okay, some of these candy canes would look cute. And these little gingerbread stickers, which were from Hobby Lobby, they were great, except the bow ties were red and green. So on one of the gingerbread men, I painted it with a green um, paint to match the greenhouses and then two of them got painted with the pink paint to match the pink house and I just got all of this hot glue down to the houses once they were all secured to the houses I felt like it needed a little something else so I took my white paint marker and I just went in and just kind of drew some squiggles and some hearts and just kind of embellished the houses a little bit more and then my pastel gingerbread village was complete The 
this DIY is a result of me not being able to find a gingerbread garland that I like for my kitchen window. So I thought, you know what, I'm gonna make one. So I had some of these red and white felt balls that I got on Amazon. Um, I had some of these felt gingerbread people or cookies or whatever you want to call them and then I still have some of those wooden beads that I used in that gingerbread garland for my last gingerbread video if you didn't catch that one I will definitely link it down below for you and I decided I'm just going to use some of the white felt balls and then I'm going to use some of the red beads from that little set and I started by taking some red and white baker's twine and I went ahead and just strung up my felt ball a wooden bead a felt ball a wooden bead a felt ball and I just just kept doing that until I got all of them strung onto the baker's twine. All of the felt balls and wood beads are on my baker's twine. I ended up using 24 white felt balls and 16 of the wood beads. So they're in groups of five. I started to glue down my gingerbread just by taking some hot glue, putting it directly on the baker's twine and then gluing it down about, I don't know, a quarter of an inch down. Just remember that if you try to do the middle of the gingerbread or you go too far down, it will make the gingerbread fall forward and you're garland will not hang right. Now the only thing I wish I'd done a little bit different and had spent a little more time on is I wish I'd taken some white thread and just done a running stitch around the edge of the gingerbread. I may go back and do that at some point but I just was kind of on a time crunch and I just really wanted to get a garland up in the window. So that was really it. This garland was super easy. Now you could go in with a paint pen and if you wanted to do some puff paint or you could use the white hot glue and embellish these but I kind of like them just very plain and simple. This DIY, you're going to need a needle and some thread along with two pieces of gingerbread felt. You can find some at Dollar Tree. I've seen tan, not this quite dark, but it's a little bit lighter tan. You can cut that out to a gingerbread shape, but I'm using some more of these that I had in my stash. You want to start by taking your first gingerbread and pull your knotted thread through. Once you've done that and it's nice and secure, you're going to take your second piece and just kind of smush them together, get them nice and lined up. Then take that thread, we're making a blanket stitch. Now I'm going to try really hard to explain this. My recommendation would maybe be to just like Google it or look on YouTube if I don't do a very good job explaining because I am not a sewing channel, but I'm gonna do my best. So I'm gonna take my needle and I'm going to poke it through the back of the thread, pull it through. Okay, here we go. I'm pulling it through. Come on, Cordy, they're waiting. And as I pull it, I'm not gonna pull it super tight until I almost to I get it super tight. There's this little loop. See the loop right there. You're going to take your needle and just pull that needle through that loop. All right. And this is the start of our blanket stitch. Now where I kind of messed up here is you're supposed to go the same direction each time. So you're going to see me right now poke through the front and then do that same thing where I poke through the front and then um, make the little loop and pull through. But really what I should have done is poke through the back first. So I, honestly, it, it wasn't really noticeable. Um, I, I'm probably confusing you <laughs> a whole ton and you're probably thinking, Courtney, maybe you shouldn't do sewing crafts. And I probably agree with you. But here you go, you've got that loop again, you're gonna pull through. So now on this third stitch, you're gonna see me poke through the back up to the front. Don't pull it too tight. You got that loop, you keep pulling your needle through and you keep doing that all the way around so it'll have your little stitches along with that little stitch that kind of goes all along the edge. Now you can see I've got it all stitched up and there's just one arm 
that hasn't been stitched. What I want to do now is put my stuffing in there. So I'm just going to use some pillow fluff. That's just what I like to use from old pillows. Using a little dowel rod to kind of help me get that in there. I'm just working in small sections till I get it stuffed. And then I will finish stitching up this gingerbread man using that blanket stitch. When you get to the last stitch, honestly, all I did was I kind of did a double stitch, knotted it, and then I just kind of secured it into the gingerbread. You could add a little tack of hot glue if you wanted to, or fabric glue, I should say, um, to help secure that. And to get him embellished, I made a little bow tie out of some ribbon that I had and hot glued that down onto his little neck area. Then I took some mini buttons that I had in my stash from Hobby Lobby, hot glued those down. For the face and the mouth, I just used a paint marker. You could add a hanger to this and turn it into a really cute ornament, but I decided I wanted to use it in my cocoa bar, so I'm just keeping him as just kind of a little plushy stuffed gingerbread man, and I think he looks really cute displayed. And there you have it, another round of gingerbread DIYs. Let me know down below which one of these projects was your favorite. Also let me know, would you like to see a gingerbread tour of my kitchen? Because I would love to show you guys and can definitely include that in a future video. And finally, do you have a good recipe for something gingerbread? Whether it's muffins, bread, cookies, drinks, let me know because I would love to grab that recipe from you. Thanks so much for watching guys. Here are some more videos that you might enjoy and I will see you in the next one. Bye.